Hey guys, welcome back to another Tech Show video. Today we're going to be taking another look at this little gadget that you might have seen in a previous video. This is the iTelco Idol, best described as a cross between a UMPC and an MP3 player. It's actually pretty much just a UMPC except that it runs a really limited version of Linux that doesn't even allow installing apps on here. In my last video of this device I talked about some of its shortfalls, of which it had several but the limited operating system was definitely the main issue I had with this device. But I'm going to fix that today folks, you read the title right, I'm going to be attempting to install Windows XP to this guy and you're going to watch me struggle through it. Okay, enough intro. Let's get right into it. Of course the logical starting point was the user guide, because I was curious to see if it would explain how booting from USB works. It's gotta be possible since they included a recovery flash drive in their box, right? Sure enough, according to the user guide, at startup the device will automatically boot from any USB drive that is plugged into it. So in theory, it should be fine just to download a Windows XP ISO and flash it to a USB drive. So that's what I did. Looking back, maybe I flashed it wrong, so it's really no surprise that it didn't boot, but I thought maybe it was because it just didn't want to run XP, so I spent some time messing around with this until I gave up trying with the flash drive. Time for plan B, which is actually what I wanted to do in the first place, I just had to cover all bases. This time I'm going to use an external USB disk drive with my trusty old copy of Windows XP, and try to boot it this way. There's not much that can go wrong with this plan, right? Should be pretty straightforward. And would you look at that, it booted right up into the XP setup. Too easy. Yeah, too easy is right. It seemed to be going just fine until it got to the setup is starting Windows part. It just wouldn't get past the screen. I researched this and someone said when they got this issue, all they had to do is wait about 15 minutes and it finally got going. So that's what I decided to try. Disappointed but not surprised, it's been well over 15 minutes and of course it's still stuck here. It's definitely not going anywhere. While I was waiting on it to do something I did some more research to see if someone had made a tutorial of some kind showing how to install Windows XP in this thing because I know it's been done, it's just that no one seems to know how since it was never really officially supported. I wasted a lot of time looking up how to install Windows XP on the iTelco Idol until I remembered this version of the device wasn't ever that popular. It's really just a rebranded iGo P8880, which actually seems to have gotten an official Windows XP version and also just got more attention overall. I found this kind of unhelpful guide to installing XP on the P8880, which pretty much just tells you to do exactly what I was trying to do that didn't work. Hook up a USB disk drive pop in a Windows XP installation disk and let it go. If only it were that simple. A side issue they did direct my attention to though was that Windows XP won't automatically recognize this touchscreen or keyboard, which would make the installation impossible since you have to interact with parts of it. They suggested using a USB hub with the disk drive and a mouse and keyboard, but my unpowered USB hub sucked too much power from the USB port making the disk drive inoperable. So I had to go on the long hunt for a powered USB hub. I finally found not one, not two, but three different USB hubs that were collecting dust in a drawer in the garage. The only issue was, I didn't have a power supply for any of them. Even though this kind of seems like a side issue since the XP setup won't get any further than the setup is starting Windows screen, I'm going to need a mouse and keyboard at some point if I ever get the setup going. So I decided to try and eliminate some power draw by removing the mouse and keyboard and using this mouse keyboard remote thing which shouldn't draw too much power. Either I'm a genius or this was just some really good luck because it actually seems to work. So it looks like we've solved the inputs issue but we're still pretty much in the same place with Windows XP refusing to install. So again, I turned to the internet searching the dark depths of old forums that only exist on the internet archives. And then I found it. Finally someone who actually made a tutorial showing how it's done. Still a little vague because I missed a kind of helpful little link at the bottom but it's a great start. This this person says you have to first format the internal drive, which seems simple enough. They suggest using the Windows Vista installer to do this, but I skipped that step for later. And then you need to use a tool called BartPE to create a BartPE bootable flash drive. This essentially lets you boot into a live Windows system, which gives you much more power and flexibility with the installation process. The issue is, how in the world do you create a BartPE bootable flash drive? Well, they had actually included a link showing how it was done, but I didn't notice that until after I had gone through the headache of researching it, getting multiple opinions, doing stuff through trial and error and failing. I'm going to save you guys the pain of having to watch me try hundreds of different things and fail because it would be honestly super boring and this video would become way too long. But anyway, finally at around 1 o'clock in the morning, I finally got the iTelco Idol to boot into Windows XP. Okay, well it's 
just BART PE, a highly customized live version of XP, but this is definitely progress. Now time to shut it down, put the BART PE flash drive back in my computer, this time to copy the Windows XP installation files to it in hopes that it will somehow magically install this time. So it has officially been an entire day since I started this project, but I'm finally ready to get this thing going. So the first thing we need to do is format the internal drive so that Windows will be able to install to it. Fortunately, BART PE comes with disk part, which should make it easy to format the drive. Unfortunately though, it doesn't seem to work, so I guess I will have to do what was suggested in the tutorial I mentioned earlier and use a Windows Vista setup disk to format the drive. Other than the mouse weirdly temporarily not responding until I switched USB hubs, it went really well. Now we can finally jump back into BART PE and attempt once more to launch the Windows XP setup. Just have to throw some commands in the run box and there we go, Windows XP setup has begun. After copying over some setup files, it's time to restart the device and initiate the main installation. This was the most simple and yet the most nerve wracking part of the whole setup. I was just sitting there watching and waiting for something to go wrong, but it didn't. This was one of the slowest installations I've ever done lasting well over an hour, but after it was all done, Windows XP just booted right up. But folks, even after all we've been through, there's still the searching for drivers. Really, this thing never actually got full Windows XP support, and I'm not just talking about the Itelco Idle. Even the iGo P8880 and P8860, which officially sort of supported Windows XP, never really worked flawlessly. There are always issues with the touchscreen, keyboard, Wi-Fi, and other stuff. Nevertheless, I am determined to at least get this basically working, which it already is, but guys, you can't have Windows XP without the audio, and for now, there's no audio drivers. So skipping past several hours of hunting around online for drivers for this thing, I finally found a website with the download links that still work. So I downloaded all of them and started installing them to the Itelco Idle. Things seem to be going great, no errors or crashes, that is until I restarted the device. We've got sound, but the graphics are horrible. Just check out the new Bliss wallpaper. Not only is the graphics driver obviously messed up, but the whole device is running far slower and keeps crashing. At first I thought the drivers were not compatible with this hardware, but it turns out it's actually just a conflict with the Itelco Idle BIOS firmware. Some people online said that you can get most of these drivers working if you flash the iGo firmware on this thing, and fortunately I was able to find the iGo firmware updater. Unfortunately though, you can't flash the firmware from within Windows. I thought maybe with a more limited version of Windows it would work, so I tried doing a BIOS flash on BART PE, but no luck there either. Apparently you need to be in DOS to get this to work, so I downloaded a BIOS update tool that drops you into DOS and lets you run the updater from there. But it wants a floppy drive. Certainly not something that Itelco Idle has built in, but I've got a USB floppy drive and we've run out of any other options, so why not? Surprisingly, writing the BIOS flashing software to the floppy disk worked just fine, so now it was just time to see if it was able to boot from floppy. And yep, it does. This time BIOS flashing went just fine and now at boot, we've got iGo branding instead of Itelco. As I was hoping for, the touchscreen now works just great and so do the rest of the drivers. As expected though, the keyboard no longer functions correctly because for some reason something about it is different than the one on the iGo device. But if I had to choose between functioning keyboard and functioning touchscreen, I'd easily take the touchscreen since you can't really do much with just a keyboard. But with a touchscreen you at least have an on-screen keyboard, so it's a mostly functional Windows XP machine now. The battery actually still holds a decent charge with Windows XP, especially if you aren't doing anything too intense like gaming. And yeah, it does do some very basic gaming stuff, but as you would imagine, you're pretty limited as to what you can really play on here. And of course, you can't really use the keyboard for games since it's messed up unless you go through the tedious process of remapping the keys. And even if you do find a game that is mouse only, it's still not guaranteed to work well since the resolution of some games confuses the touchscreen. All in all though, it's a pretty awesome little machine now. I honestly never thought I would be using Windows XP on a machine this small, but here we are. The ultimate UMPC experience interrupted only occasionally by needing to use a full mouse and or keyboard. I'd say this was worth the two plus days I spent working on this. You don't even know all the trial and error that went into this project. I had to cut out many hours of things that didn't work just to make this video not completely boring. But in the end, yep, it's definitely worth it. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future content. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.